So for the past two years, I've been exclusively selling nameplates in my Etsy shop. But this past week, I decided to dive headfirst into a brand new product category. And I'm bringing you guys along for the entire journey. This is gonna be a multi-part series. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you the entire design process and the printing and the product. In later videos, I'm gonna be giving you weekly updates and show you the life cycle of this new product in my Etsy shop. I hope to do weekly updates for an entire month so you guys can see what it's actually like to put a brand new product into your Etsy shop and try to get some sales. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on future videos for this series. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. All right, so let's back up a little and talk about why I even decided to launch a new product in the first place. So a couple weeks ago, I posted my A1 combo vlog. And in the beginning of that video, I threw away a bunch of scrap filament and the comment section was very unhappy with me. You guys really opened my eyes about how wasteful that was and I knew I needed to remedy this in some way. I came up with a few freebie products that I was gonna start sending with my packages, but I knew that that wasn't gonna be enough. As you can see here, I never threw that bag of filament away. I've actually used up pretty much all of those scrap rolls to start this new product. All that's left in this bag now is just empty rolls. And if you guys can come up with a way for me to use these empty rolls, I'd love to know. You guys came up with lots of ideas to help me use up the scrap filament. So if you have any ideas for ways I can actually use these empty rolls, let me know and I won't throw them away. All right, so this new product. I've had the idea for a little while to try and do 25 keychains in an hour for a video. I'll probably give that a try someday, but once I started looking into product research on Etsy and I typed in keychains, and as you can see here, almost 1.5 million different options for keychains, which of course I would want to niche down and find a smaller category and different keywords other than just keychains, but if you look at the grand scheme of things, 1.5 million is a ton of products for me to enter into, and I didn't really see that there would be a lot of room to make short-term money, which is the point of this video. So I remembered watching a reel on Instagram where a girl was selling bookmarks, and she posted how much she made each month. That part's not really important, but what was important is that she was selling bookmarks and I can print bookmarks. They're pretty small. I knew I could use up the scrap filament that I had in the basement, so I decided to give it a try. I went to Etsy to see if there was room for me to enter into this category. I typed in bookmark, a little over 300,000 results. There's room for me in this category. That's still a lot, but if I niche down, let's say fish bookmark, only 2,000 results. And what do you know? This one is mine. This is one that I listed. And so if I can find other small categories within bookmarks, I think there's room for me here. And after seeing this, I just typed in fish bookmark. You can see there's other options up here. There's a seahorse. I can print that. There's a whale. I can print that. There's so many options within bookmarks that I can dive into and it's really, really exciting for me. So I knew this was the category that I wanted to go with. I was gonna start creating bookmarks. So that's how I came up with the idea. Let's jump in the computer and take a look at the design process. All right, so I've already created a bookmark in Illustrator or a template. I want it to be two inches by eight inches. And so in here I have it 100 pixels by 400 pixels because that is a proportion of two to eight import that. And I'm creating this just so that I can see how thick I want the bookmark to be, whether I like this size, all of that. So we'll start with one millimeter thick. That doesn't give me a ton of room to design. After doing a few test prints, it turns out that the correct thickness was going to be between one and 1.2 millimeters. But as you see, as the video goes on, I don't end up sticking to that thickness because I end up using Hue Forge and I couldn't really dictate a specific thickness for the bookmark because of the way the design ended up working. I'll show you that later, but for this specific purpose, 
one millimeter to 1.2 millimeters was the sweet spot. Now I'm gonna open up Mid Journey. I'm also gonna open up ChatGPT, that might help. <laughs> we'll start something simple like that. Give me 50 bookmark theme ideas. So now we have 50 ideas for our bookmark. And I'm gonna start out by making some patterns in Mid Journey related to some of these. So two inches of snow ahead. What? I hope that's real. I love snow. Okay. Now let's go back over here to mid journey. First thing I'm going to do is create some kind of pattern. So let me pull back up my this over here. Space adventure. That might be kind of cool. A space themed pattern on a dark background. Let's see what it comes up with first in outer space. And we're going to go dash dash tile because that will give me an actual pattern. So these actually turned out pretty cool. I'm going to upscale. Like I think I can use like a part of this one. This one's pretty cool. So I'm going to upscale number one. Okay, I think that's good for space. Let's see what I can work with. So once I had all the patterns that I wanted to use for Mid Journey, the process in Illustrator was the same every single time. I'll walk you step by step through the process here once, and then I'll just speed it up a little bit so you can see all the different patterns that I ended up using for my bookmarks. All right, so once you're in Illustrator, you just go File, Place, and then just pick one of the patterns that you saved from Mid Journey. So any of these here will work. I'll start with this one. And then once you have your pattern, you just go make sure it's selected. Then you come to the top and you click Object, Pattern, Make, hit OK. And then if I zoom out, you can see that it's created a 3x3, three three, which is what I have selected over here on the side. It's good. I like the way that that looks. So then I would hit Done up here in the top. And now this swatch is a pattern. You can see over here in the Swatches panel, Here's all of my patterns that I created while making this or while making my bookmarks. So I can use those again in the future if I want to. This one is right here. So if I grab this bookmark that I've been using as a template and I pick any of these swatches, this is the one I just created. If I pick this one, I can now resize it and move it around. And it's just gonna adjust to whatever I just did with my pattern. If I don't like this pattern, I can pick a different one. I have tons of them. If I want to make it really small and just get parts of it, I can. Or if I want to make all the soccer balls a lot smaller, I can make this as big as I want to and then they'll be really small. However you save this pattern originally, you can kind of adjust it later on just depending on how you size your template. All right, I think that's a good spot for this. Okay, so we will object, expand, okay. Once I exported the bookmarks from Illustrator, I needed a way to separate them into layers so that I could 3D print them. I tried it the way that I usually separate my layers by using an SVG converter, but because these are so detailed, that really didn't work very well. I ended up having to use Hueforge. If you've never heard of Hueforge, here it is. It's uh, basically a way to create a painting using your images or using any kind of image. Basically, it just separates your picture or your image into layers and allows you to stack filament on top of each other and try to paint whatever image you're trying to create. You'll see me use it more in just a second, but basically you just move some sliders up and down and adjust it and it'll change your image on the screen for you so you can see how it's going to print. Once you download Hueforge, you launch the app using the .exe file. So if I launch Hueforge, here it is. Um, like I said, you basically just adjust these sliders and it changes the way that the image looks on the screen. I'll show you an example. So if we open file and image, I can go to any of these bookmarks that I've created. If I open this one to make it look like this, I would have to put similar colors down here in the bottom. So it likes the darkest color to be on the bottom and the lightest color to be on the top. So if I want the black to show through like it is right now, I would keep black here. Then if I want this orange color, I would need to pick an orange color. And then I could pick like yellow or something to go on top of here. And it's starting to look more like my image over here on the right. 
Um, another thing that you can do, I told you guys earlier in the video that I couldn't really adjust how thick my bookmarks were. You can a little bit. So this minimum depth, the minimum thickness of the bottom layer, kind of. Um, so 0.24 means that this black layer starts at 0.24. If I wanted my bookmark to be thicker, all I would have to do is adjust this up a little bit. And it's changing my image, it's making less black. But if I want it to be thicker and also have the same amount of black, I would just come over here to the black slider and raise it until I liked the way the black looked in the image. Another thing you can do is adjust the maximum depth. So the entire piece is gonna be two millimeters thick. You can see down here on the bottom, this is where each of them, or how thick each of them is. Like if it starts at zero, this one would go until 0.88. This one would start at 0.88 and go until 1.04. The yellow would start at 1.04 and go to 1.52. And the white would go from 1.52 to two millimeters. So if you want your piece to be thicker, you would raise this part and you can see the everything is like dropping down. So then it gives you more room to adjust the sliders. You can get a little more detailed. Up here in the top, you can change the height and the width. I wanted my bookmarks to be 200 millimeters long. So if I change this to 200, it automatically adjusts the width to be 50. And so now this is the perfect size for me to export. When you export from HueForge, you hit File, Save Project. What that's gonna do is create a set of four files one of them was your original image, one of them is a describe, and one of them is the STL file that you would actually pull into Bamboo Lab. Okay, so we were working on the orange soccer. I'll just start with that one. So here I have orange soccer. The green is going to be my STL file. I will pull that into the slicer. And then from here, we also need to make sure we pull up the describe because this is going to tell us what layers we change the colors to. So it tells us to print at 100% infill with a layer height of 0.08 and a base layer of 16 millimeters. All right, so I need a base layer of 0.16, so 0.16. I need a layer height of 0.08 and I need 100% infill. Okay, so those settings I got set up, it's all of those. And then you would come back over here. And if my first layer is black, I would go ahead and change the filament to black. Then once I have that, I'll hit slice. Okay, and at this point, the entire thing would just be black. There would be no colors. Um, so to add the colors, if I pull this back up over here, you can see that at layer number seven or 0.64, I would swap to orange. So I would come down here to 0.64, right click, change filament to orange. Next at 1.36, I change to yellow. And then at 1.44, change to white, slice again. And now it would be ready to print. I would just make sure that those four colors are loaded into my AMS. And you can even print this without an AMS. You would just put pauses at these spots instead of color changes. And then you would manually change from black to orange, from orange to yellow and yellow to white. But that's basically how HueForge works. If you want a more detailed tutorial, I can make one for you. Just let me know in the comments what you guys would like to see. But yeah, I think it's a pretty cool program. And it's pretty helpful for turning images into 3D prints. But now let's get back to the video. We'll see the final prints and then we'll be finished with this. That might be as good as we're going to get. So we got one space one done. Wow, that took a really long time, but it's cool that we can try and use HueForge. You guys have wanted me to make a HueForge video for a while. Back when I did all my AI art videos, you're like, use HueForge. Okay, I'm using HueForge. Let's get another one going. Back to ChatGPT. So we have a space one going. Vintage vibes. Um, okay, not sure what that one is. Whimsical Wonderland, Minimalist Marvels, Mystical Creatures, Travel Tales, Under the Sea. We could do Under the Sea. Like, what is that? That's not a fish. This one might work. Alright, I like this one. We'll go with that. 
And then we reslice, and it should be good to go on the printer. So we'll go get this filament loaded, and then we will have two that are printing. We didn't get a ton done, but we're moving in the right direction. We'll see what these turn out looking like. They may be terrible, but I'm hoping that they end up looking pretty cool. All right, so the initial bookmark is a little thin. I like the concept, but I'm gonna have to change how thick the initial layer is. So back to the drawing board for this one, but pretty cool otherwise. This turned out so much better. I'm still not sure if I'm 100% happy with it. All right, the fish one is finished and I think it looks pretty sweet. Hopefully it's thick enough and we don't have to reprint this one too. Yeah, I actually think this one is plenty thick. So it's a little flimsy, but not like the other one. The other one was see-through. So I think the fish one is good to go. All right, you guys, that's the process. You've seen two of the bookmarks completed. If I was to show you all of the bookmarks that I created, this video would be incredibly long. So we're gonna end it here. To wrap things up, I'm just going to show you a quick clip of all of the designs that I got created the rest of the day. In the next video, I'll be showing you the listing process, product pictures, everything that I did on Etsy to get these up and running. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that video. But for now, here's the rest of these designs, and I'll see you guys in the next one.